So today we are starting phase one, which is um, doing the soil mapping with electroconductivity. Actually, Ryan Maiden with Simplot is doing it currently as I'm talking. We are going to be able to define a variation that uh, is part of this piece of property on the 230 acres. And according to this variation we're going to find on the map and according to the results, we're going to be able to sample the soil and do some uh, physical and chemical analysis that will allow, allow us to know better what's underneath the ground and on different depth level. We will then uh, have uh, Kevin Pug who will help us on uh, digging pit and we will analyze the pits and tell what are in those different pits we are digging according to the soil we're gonna get from the soil mapping. So today it's, it's really a great day because it's, it's just starting and uh, I think it's gonna be a tremendous vineyard down the road. The goal of, uh, of doing the soil mapping is to identify a variation in the soil. As you can see, the property over here is kind of done on three different levels. We have the bottom level, the medium level and the upper level. The bottom level and the medium level are pretty uniform, but the upper level is very heterogeneous and the intent of, doing, of knowing the variation is then to locate them and be able to sample uh, the soil and be more aware of the structural, like physical and chemical analysis. I don't know, we, I think we're probably the first ones to come in here and purchase this ground, but we're just kind of taking our time and trying to figure out what we really have and uh, hopefully come up with something pretty special in the end, I hope. It's two years that we kind of first started looking and uh, finally doing something, but uh, this is pretty special because, you know, it's really the biggest part of our company is uh, where you grow table grapes. So, so we do table grapes and wine grapes, and they're completely, completely separate animals all together. We do wine grapes out in Paso Robles. I tend to call this the bottomless Luss uh, terroir because uh, Luss is a geologic term for windblown silts. And, uh, you know, we, we're standing here in a six foot deep pit and we're, we're, there's no evidence of, of a lot of variability here in this, just uh, thick silts. And I, if he dug another three or four feet, I think we'd see the same thing. I would imagine, you know, you know a three or four year old vine here would, would be rooting down to six or eight feet through this whole profile. Of course, the, most of the roots would be in the upper two or three feet because plants are smart enough to know where the water's coming from. Uh, but if you're stingy with the water, you can you can force the roots to to go deep. Oh, I think you know this is excellent. The uh, vines can root very deeply in this, and you'll be able to control the soil moisture with the the drip uh, very precisely, exactly what you want. Yeah, the roots will love it. A lot of pits will have more variability in this, especially when we're down lower, uh, below the level of the Missoula floods. Uh, they uh, inundated the area to about 1,200 feet. We're above that in this pit, so there's not any sediment that was deposited directly by the Missoula flood here. Uh, these sediments were uh, blown into position by winds that uh, redeposited those Missoula flood sediments. Well, we're going to do a number of analyses. Um, most importantly, I think we're going to look at the, the pH, the EH, the electrical conductivity, also, we're going to look at the transition metals that the plants uh, have available to them. Why that's important is because these, these trace metals that are, uh, you know, very small quantities within the soils actually provide the nucleation sites for things like organic acids to form. This is where you get the flavor, which you can look at the flavor of the wine based on the trace element content there. And this relates back to the organic chemistry of the wine itself. So that's what I'm trying to look at here. Well, we're in a, another pit that's more up on top of the hill in a different block of the land. And, and the, here in this pit, we've hit uh, the basalt bedrock. Uh, in terms of complexity, uh, this material is, is quite a bit different from uh, the silt, uh, the pure silt, which we uh, saw in the uh, other pit. And here at four or five feet, we go out of this silt loam material uh, into this uh, 
fractured, uh, chemically altered basalt probably would um, affect the flavors of the uh, wines made from here and make them uh, distinct from those in the other site. Uh, this is an XRF gun, which is an interesting thing. It's this handy little device can actually give you the chemistry of the soils and even of the rocks when you're out here. So this is something that we're going to be using out in the field to uh, understand this idea of minerality within your wine. And sure enough, it goes back to the minerals, you know. Fire away. We're using basically P wave velocity as a proxy for uh, grain size, and, and grain size relates to hydraulic conductivity and watering requirements. People have been farming grapes for many, many years and have a more comfort level of probably what the ground is going to do and the soils and all that. Uh, we're just trying to, to learn that for ourselves firsthand so we have a concept of what, what we have here. But I think that's, that's good to see further than just uh, the first foot level uh, sample and uh, to actually really touch uh, the dirt. You know, I would characterize this section here as probably uniformly deep, well-drained um, um, uh, silt loam soils. I would suspect that this piece would have great uniformity. This is going to be a pretty easy site to manage, uh, at least from what I can tell in this pit. Very deep soil, very well-drained. Um, not, not, not many management issues associated with a soil like this. And I'm, I'm very surprised too to see this soil is holding so much, so much moisture. So that's great news actually. We're gonna be able to really focus on the zone and take the soil samples and then analyze them. And it's gonna help us later on um, designing our irrigation and also uh, uh, choosing the right clones or varieties that we're going to put on and eventually just manage the property um, with a, a level of precision that's going to help us on doing a really good job on, uh, on the quality we are trying to achieve here.